Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a fantasy film, Maleficent. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Hello Surfshark, thanks a ton for sponsoring today's episode. By use of Surfshark VPN, you can easily remove the geo restrictions and are allowed to surf all your favorite contents freely on those streaming platforms, such as Netflix, Disney+, HBO Max, Hulu, and many more. All you need to do is simply drop a click on the Surfshark app to change your internet location to another country. There you see, just in a second, you will find yourself unlocked to tons of funny contents that will definitely deny your access. Besides, if you just surf the internet naked without any Surfshark gear, your privacy and info security would be in great danger due to numerous sea webs and little crabs that take your info without you even knowing it. But you can swim naked and safe under Surfshark's radar protection because all of your internet traffic is encrypted for your best interest. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. So if you want both freedom and protection online, click the link in the description below and use the code DANIELCC for 83% off and 3 extra months for free. Moors is an enchanted forest kingdom bordering the human kingdom as home to magical creatures and fairies. It is guarded by a young, hard-hearted, and free-spirited fairy named Maleficent. Maleficent is gifted with great powerful wings to fly through the magical moors. She cherishes everything of moors and protects it with her utmost love. One day the moors are disturbed by the presence of a young peasant boy named Stefan, who tries to steal a jewel from the pool of jewels. Stefan should be punished, but Maleficent forgives him after he returns the jewels. Through interactions, she finds out that they are both orphans. Maleficent and Stefan eventually become the best of friends. And later, their friendship grows into something more, when Stefan kisses her. Unexpectedly after quite some time, Stefan stops visiting the Moors because of his ambition and greed. So the couple part their paths. Years later, the greedy king of the human world wants the treasure of Moors. So he launches a threatening attack on Moors. Maleficent becomes her homeland sworn protector, commanding her forest army to triumph over the humans. Defeated and wounded, the king demands to be avenged at his deathbed. He promises that whoever kills Maleficent shall become the new king and marry his daughter. At this time, Stefan has become one of the king's servants, and he is tempted to claim the throne. So he journeys to the moors to find Maleficent and spends their time together as they used to. Stefan tricks her into taking a drink that puts her to sleep. And after she falls into her slumber, Stefan cuts off her wings and presents them to the dying king. When Maleficent awakens to find her wings gone, she utters a single series of heart-wrenching cries. Without her wings, she goes through many pains and sufferings. In order to stay updated on the human kingdom, Maleficent saves a raven captured by a farmer and turns it into a handsome man. As years pass by, Handsome has become the most faithful servant to Maleficent. He can freely switch between the form of a raven and the form of a human. Turned into a raven, he flies to the castle and witnesses Stefan being crowned as king with the princess as his queen. Hearing such news, Maleficent is very disappointed. She soon rises to the throne and rules over Moors as a cold and evil queen. When the reports come to Maleficent that a daughter is born to Stefan, she decides to attend the royal christening. Still enraged at what Stefan did to her, Maleficent is up for revenge. She curses the newborn Princess Aurora to fall into a death-like sleep, with her finger pricked on the spindle of a spinning wheel on her 16th birthday. But when Stefan begs her to spare his daughter's life, Maleficent adds that the curse can only be lifted by true love's kiss. To prevent the curse from happening, Stefan orders to have every spinning wheel in the kingdom burned, and locked away in the deepest dungeon of the castle. He also entrusts the little Princess Aurora to the care of three kind pixies. Back to the moors, Maleficent makes an indestructible thorny border wall around the forest to ban humans access to the fairyland. Later, the three pixies bring Aurora to an old cottage in the woods and appear to her in human forms. However, having little experience in baby care, the three elf ants are often left helpless when Aurora cries. They do not understand what she wants and thus feeds her raw carrots when she is hungry. Taking pity on the little princess, Ansem drops by the cottage from time to time and secretly looks after Aurora. Meanwhile, Stefan becomes extremely darkened and deploys his men to hunt down Maleficent at all costs. At his command, thousands of soldiers set fire to the briars at the edge of the forest. Even though the thorny border is lit, Maleficent manages to defeat all of them all with thorns. Stefan is furious at the defeat, but he is soon reminded that iron is lethal to Maleficent. So he has his blacksmiths work non-stop to produce iron armory. 
Day after day, Aurora grows up under the care of fairies. When she runs into Maleficent in the woods, she is not afraid of her at all. Instead, the lovely princess opens her arms wide to Maleficent for a hug. Unknowingly, Maleficent's heart is softened. She often pays attention to Aurora, always concerned about her well-being. Growing up, Aurora becomes more and more curious about the world outside the thorny border. One day, as the human soldiers appear nearby the border, Maleficent puts Aurora to sleep and drives all the soldiers away with her magical power. And then, Maleficent leads Aurora to the moors. When Aurora awakens in the breathtaking moors, she is mesmerized by its beauty, and her heart throbs with joy. Suddenly, she follows the frightened eyes of one fairy, and realizes that someone with authority must be in the vicinity. Aurora turns around to find Maleficent standing behind a tree. To Maleficent's surprise, Aurora is not scared of her at all. And she even ardently calls Maleficent her fairy godmother. By now, Maleficent realizes that Aurora is already aware of her existence. But when Aurora runs up to hug her, Maleficent rejects it by putting her to sleep, and brings her home. Looking at the innocent Aurora, Maleficent feels sorry for what she has done, and decides to remove the curse from her. However, the curse is irrevocable. As Maleficent and Aurora develop a mother and daughter-like relationship, she intends to inform Aurora of the curse. Before she could tell the truth, Aurora expresses her wish to live in the moors together with Maleficent. Maleficent hence changes her mind to keep quiet. Afterward, Aurora bumps into a prince, who has lost his ways in the woods. And it instantly becomes love at first sight. Hansom sees their relationship as a key to lift the curse, but Maleficent does not believe true love exists. Back to the cottage, Aurora learns from the three fairies about her origin. In sadness, Aurora approaches Maleficent and tells her that she is cursed. But Maleficent's reaction reveals her role in the tragedy. Shocked and furious, Aurora flees the woods and returns to the castle to meet Stefan. However, by now Stefan has turned more callous and evil. He no longer pays attention to governing the country. In fact, he is so consumed by his desire to kill Maleficent that he shows no grief over his queen's death. So it is no surprise that he reacts coldly to Aurora's early return and her hug. By right, the three pixies should escort Aurora back after her 16th birthday. To shield Aurora from any potential harm, Stefan orders to have Aurora locked up in her bedroom. At this time, Maleficent understands that the curse is due soon, and she must rescue Aurora no matter what. She knocks Prince out, and brings him to the castle. Aurora initially does not believe in the curse. But as the appointed time comes, she is led by a whispering voice to the castle's dungeon, where all the spinning wheels in the kingdom were burnt out of odds. Aurora pricks her finger on the spindle of spinning wheel, and falls into a death-like slumber. Meanwhile, Maleficent is rushing to the castle on her black horse with Prince in a trance. When Maleficent learns that the curse takes effect, she crouches on her horse with a broken heart. Even though her attempt to reach Aurora is in vain, Maleficent insists on letting Prince try the true love kiss. The castle has been transformed by Stefan into a grim place of metals. In order to save Aurora, Maleficent willingly walks through the iron hallway. Right now, Aurora has been brought back to her room, so Maleficent drops Prince at its entrance. When the fairies know that he is a prince, they quickly usher him into the room. Prince gazes at Aurora, only to feel shy and embarrassed. Pressured by the fairies, he reluctantly presses his lips against Aurora's. To Maleficent's disappointment, nothing happens, and Aurora remains asleep after his smelly kiss. The fairies then leave the room to find someone else to tongue massage Aurora. Maleficent enters the room when no one else is there. Looking at the kind and innocent Aurora under the curse, she confesses all her guilt and tears. At last, she gently kisses Aurora on her forehead, and a miracle happens. When Maleficent is about to go, Aurora amazingly opens her eyes, and gladly calls her godmother. It is because Maleficent's ardent love for Aurora, lifts the curse that she had cast. Having received Aurora's forgiveness, Maleficent sheds tears of joy. United, they decide to flee the palace together. However, on their way out, Stefan's guards trap Maleficent with an iron net. Aurora tries to help Maleficent, but she is soon held back by Stefan's men. Maleficent turns Handsome into a great dragon, and he lifts the net off her. In response, the guards surround her with iron shields and bind Handsome in chains. Later, fully armed Stefan makes his grand entrance, along with many guards protecting him. Meanwhile, Aurora hiding in a room, accidentally discovers a pair of wings kept in a cabinet. The wings are flipping as if they are looking for the owner. When Aurora hears Maleficent screams, she realizes the wings might belong to her godmother. 
so she pushes the cabinet down to release the wings. Just as Stefan is on the verge of slaying Maleficent, her wings reattach themselves to her. With her power restored, Maleficent flies up to set Handsome free. Together, they take down the guards one by one easily. But treacherous Stefan does not want to give up the chance of killing Maleficent. So he holds onto the iron chain on Maleficent's foot. To get rid of Stefan, Maleficent carries him onto one of the castle's towers. Recalling Stefan's betrayal and merciless attacks against her, Maleficent intends to impale him. But she finally spares Stefan's life, as she cannot bear to kill the man she once loved. Stefan, however, does not feel thankful at all. He refuses to let go of his grudges or his desire to wipe out Maleficent. As a last resort, he jumps onto Maleficent and causes the two of them to fall off the tower. As the two are falling down, Maleficent manages to shake Stefan off, leaving him to fall to his death. And then Maleficent invites Aurora to the moors, where the border wall is taken down and its beauty restored. Maleficent passes her crown to Aurora, making her queen of both the human and fairy kingdom. With peace finally made between the two lands, Maleficent's heart gets bright and kind again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.